about soil testing over the last few weeks, and there's one of the primary nutrients that we still haven't talked about yet, it's phosphorus. Phosphorus on a soil test, you'll find with several different ways you're going to measure it. So, for example, you go to look at a soil test, you say, well, this should be simple, I just am looking for parts per million. Well, not exactly, okay? There are different tests depending on what your soil pH is. So, what we believe is if you've got a soil pH below seven, you'll find the Bray test to be a little more accurate, and we believe the Olsen test will be a little more accurate in higher pH soils. Well, let's take those low pH soils first, because there's two Bray tests that show yep. up on a soil test. There's a P1, which is a weak Bray test, and a P2, which is a strong Bray test. Now, the weak Bray test is meant to give you an indication of what is going to be available to your crop this year, where that strong Bray test is a measure of the total phosphorus in the soil. Okay, so when you're looking at parts per million here, whether it's on the Bray or the Olsen, one of the most important things to understand is what those numbers really mean. In other words, if you see a number of 10 on there, well, what does that tell you? Okay, well, here's an important thing you always need to remember. In six inches of soil, you've got about two million pounds. So if you've got an acre that's six inches deep, you've got about two million pounds of total soil there. In other words, if we have a parts per million test, all you need to do is multiply that number times two, and that'll tell you roughly how many pounds per acre of phosphorus you've got. So if your number is 10 parts per million, multiply it times two, you've got approximately 20 pounds of phosphorus per acre. Then you've got to look at how many pounds of phosphorus your crop needs. You're gonna get some that's going to come available from the organic matter breaking down in your soil, you're going to get some that's just out there in your soil, maybe left over from this year's crop, but you may need to apply more phosphorus depending on which crop you're raising and what the nutrient needs of that crop are going to be. So for example, if you have a corn crop that's going to yield 200 bushels, it will need approximately 76 pounds just for the grain, and you're going to need over 100 pounds total. So if you've got a parts per million test that says 10, that's going to give you around 20 pounds, and let's say you've got a little bit, a low level of organic matter out there, you might get another five or 10 pounds of phosphorus out of that. So grand total, you're looking at 30 pounds of phosphorus, but your needs are over 100. You're gonna need quite a bit of phosphorus this year just to get to where you wanna be yield-wise. Well, we've talked about phosphorus on the soil test a little bit, but it's also important to remember that phosphorus gets tied up real easily in a soil. So you wanna to try to do things like maybe banding your fertilizer to protect that phosphorus, and also there are products you can use to protect the phosphorus too. Well, you could use something like if you're using a liquid product, Pro Germinator, that has an organic protein that protects that phosphorus, or a widely used product has been Avail, whether you've got liquid or dry phosphorus. In fact, we're using some Avail on our farm this fall. It's worked very well, especially on our farm in the high pH soils and also where we've had some problems with tie-up in the past. And the reason that the Avail works and protects that phosphorus is it has a super negative charge that's going to tie up the positively charged cations that would normally bind with that phosphorus, making it unavailable for your crop. Like calcium, for example, binds with phosphorus and makes calcium phosphate, which is not available for your crop. With the Avail on there, it will tie those calcium ions up so your crop is free to pull that phosphorus right in. Well, don't think that you're gonna get carryover from last year's crop. Look at your soil tests and figure out what this year's crop needs. That's how you're gonna know where you're at for phosphorus in your fields. And remember, you've gotta take a look at the Bray test. If your soil pH is a little bit on the low side, the Olsen test we believe is a little more accurate when the soil pH is above seven. And that Olsen test will tell you available phosphorus for this year's crop, but it won't tell you how to control this week's Weed of the Week. We'll show you how coming up next.